so so you, you're doing these you doing these variety of different measures of the health of, of the health of the code one of the things that you said kind of intrigued me because because one one of the ideas it's 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 at a much simpler level in terms of code quality than what you're talking about but one one of the things that, one of the ideas that i've been pushing if i'm honest recently uh, is the idea that i it seems to me that the most important measure of quality of our code is our ability to change it and not much else matters and so the other parts of that thing ideas like cohesion um uh matter because they maintain our ability to change the code easily do you think that's a reasonable kind of overview picture of what we should value as as, as quality in code or, or do you think there's more to it than that Uh, I mean, it's hard for me to disagree with that statement because I think it's it's right that um, you know our ability to change a piece of code is a super important driver, right, for mm -hmm. code quality in general. Uh, I think there might be a bit more to it uh, because uh, there is this wonderful book by uh, Robert Glass called uh, "Facts and Fallacies of Software Engineering," an old book but still uh, one of my favorites. And he, he kind of has this uh, sixty sixty rule that I've been referring to over the years where it says that 60% uh, of your work is making modifications to existing code. And 60% mm -hmm. of that time in turn is spent trying to understand what the code does in the first place. Yeah. So that kind of enforces your point that yeah, change is the ability to change is important, but also think that the way you optimize for change is by making the code as easy to understand as possible, because that's where we spend most of our time. So to me, we want to optimize any aspect of code. We should optimize for ease of understanding. That's where the big win is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly wouldn't do disagree with that. I, I, I would. I guess, I guess the the analysis that I make is that the reason why ease of understanding matters is because it makes it easy to change the code. It's not that it's not that I. Don't, but 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 ease of understanding is absolutely one of the most important tools that we have at our disposal. Uh, I, I was just, I was just intrigued. I, I, I suppose in part, I was, I was looking to see if you, if you, if you, if you reinforce my opinions or helped me to reinforce my opinions, but, but, but I, I just think it's an important idea because I think often we get hung up. I, I think the technicalities are important, but we need to understand why the technicalities matter. Why is it that um, poorly cohesive code is worse than nicely cohesive code, um, and it's for these kinds of reasons. And 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 so it helps me to 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 understand and think about and prioritise the kinds of changes that I was making. So it's, uh, sorry, I'm just going off on one of my hobby horses now. But it's I think it's I think it's an important idea, and it's it's certainly one of the ones that I am trying to popularise at the moment. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. And um, one of the barriers related to that that I've been trying to tackle over the past years with uh, the research we have been doing, that has been to try to make code quality relevant at the business level. Because yes. I, I think that's uh, something that's very much undervalued at the moment. And that, that was one of the things that, that I really loved about you. I don't know whether it's your current conference presentation, but the one that I saw at, at Yao at the end of last year, um, it was one of the things that, that I really liked about it because you're putting this in the work, real world. This isn't, you know, we, we can talk about, you know, ideas like cyclomatic complexity and all of those sorts of things, you know, on the technical front, but that's meaningless to somebody without a translator. And, and so putting this into the context of real value, the real value to organizations that practice software development of being able to use software development capability in the commercial interests or whatever other interests of, of the company that's engaging in it. It's, it's so important. We're not, as professionals, we're not doing this for some ideal, purist ideal. I'll, ideology or whatever of nice code we're doing this for practical reasons because we get to make more software it more easily if we if we make our code high quality so i, I think it's a really deeply important problem 
So, yeah, so, yeah. so, so your your stuff just brings that alive. Your, the, the, the the demonstrations that I've seen of the, the products called Code Scene, as well as the, as well as your business, I think, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. That's the name of both the company and the tool. Yeah. So, so, so the, the Code Scene product, you know, it, it does kind of bring it alive. So that any you can show those pictures to anybody, whatever their technical back, background, and have a sensible conversation about them. Yeah, and I, I think that's a super important conversation to have inside any organization, right? Because uh, one of the challenges I've seen myself over the years is that I had so many people uh, telling me that, no, we cannot afford to do this, right? We don't have time to rethink the architecture, don't have time to automate tests, don't have time to refactor, right? So somehow there is this, I would like to say it's a perceived uh, conception, misconception that uh, there were is some kind of trade-off between speed and quality, right? We can either yeah. go very fast, we can go well, but it will slow us down. And the, the data we have been collecting and the research we have been doing, and uh, I think this is very much supported and in alignment with uh, the DORA research, right? That yes. there really is no such trade-off. I mean, the opposite is true, right? We see that the companies that manage to move with high quality, they also can deliver in much shorter development cycles, can ship much, much more. So there is yeah. no such trade-off. Yeah, and 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 you know, I, I was I was delighted when 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 Dora first showed that, and and your work you know, reinforces that message too, because subjectively, that that's always been you know, my opinion is that the reason why quality matters in code is because it allows us to build more software, <laughs> it allows us to you know, it allows us to go faster. Fundamentally, it's, you know, from a commercial point of view, once again. This ought to matter to every software development organization because that's it seems obvious, it seems very obvious, I suppose, with the benefit of hindsight. And it's really nice to have this more scientific backup, backing of, of, of studies like yours and, and the, 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 Dora, the Dora measures. But it seems fairly obvious that if you build crap software this week, you're going to go slower next week because you're fixing all the problems that you introduced last week. It's just, it's just crazy. So, so it's certainly been my own, my, you know, my, my own subjective experience that the best teams that I've worked on not only built the best software, but also went a lot faster than other teams. That, that, that there just doesn't seem to be a distinction between those, and I think that's just one of those myths that that surrounds our industry. And we've kind of built up structures and project management disciplines and all kinds of things around that that mythology. It's a problem. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's a very destructive myth, and um, I think part of the problem is that software is a very abstract thing, right? It lacks visibility. Yeah. And uh, I, I think the consequence of that is that doing improvements to the internal quality of code, like yeah, larger refactoring, that kind of stuff, it, it kind of lacks an external value, right? The software is doing the same thing, which is the purpose of refactoring, right? But there's yeah. nothing I can sell to a client. It's not doing more, right? It does have more capabilities. And that always means that improvements tend to get the backseat compared to adding the next big feature, right? So it's, it's a yeah. hard sell, larger improvements. Yeah, and 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 people, I, I think, I I, th I think we're, we're all kind of products of a you know a, 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 an industrial civilization. You know, sort of, you know, we grew up with people building cars on or widgets or whatever on production lines, and so we have that kind of manufacturing meme planted deeply in our psyche. But software development is not about manufacturing in the slightest aspect. It's a very, very, very different kind of thing. And manufacturing techniques don't work. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes. So please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.